here we are nowadays getting darker and darker, polluted with catastrophic results, dramatic. We are a little bit like that bear. Time is running short. We consume more than is available. Now that there is ample scientific evidence uh, that our relationship with ourselves, with others, and uh, all the living things, the planet, is the main variable influencing all the aspects uh, we call problematic nowadays. Is the Anthropocene time, as one of our member, Paul Krusen, have uh, uh, many years ago nominated this area. So it's of the utmost importance uh, that uh, we realize our need uh, to see and not to be blind, to think and to act uh, as a system, being aware that we cannot just uh, see different uh, square not connected one another. We have to see interdisciplinarily, intersexually, and also cross and interculturally. As Albert has said, we cannot solve, unfortunately, the problem of today with the level of thinking that has created them, just making us blind. I'm talking about reductionistic uh, thinking that makes us blind. And uh, education is not the only thing, but certainly education uh, is crucial in what is the, the social construction of reality. And uh, it's very evident uh, that we need a paradigm, paradigm change. Uh, and here we have heard uh, so many voices also Ministry of Education, the government, uh, I'm very happy to hear uh, more and more that this is a common shared concern. So how are we going to deal effectively with the mounting challenge uh, that are facing us and that uh, we created? And now we have a new player, the so-called fourth industrial revolution. That's another element uh, that could be good news or really bad news, in my opinion. Because uh, the fourth industrial revolution uh, is bringing a, a new barrage of change, uh, new technology, but uh, not only technology, new changes. Uh, is uh, not very clear anymore what is uh, people and uh, what are the physical world, uh, we live in virtual reality, and uh, the lines uh, between uh, what is uh, uh, the uh, biocycle social aspect uh, are becoming blurred, and even the notion uh, of what is to be human uh, um, are not so clear anymore. So <clears throat> this time, we really cannot afford the luxury, not even before, to mismanage this inevitable revolution. And we hoped at the first, the second, and third revolution that they would bring a just progress, but it's not been so. Promises like DDT, for example, we felt they were God sent, actually, science sent, but uh, it backfired. We were blind uh, that not only DDT will kill unwanted pests, that's good, uh, but the DDT continued to do the honest DDT mission uh, and permeate all the life chain. So we find uh, mother milk with DDT trace, penguin's liver with DDT. And remember the revolution uh, chemical fertilizer, doubling uh, agriculture crops, great. Unfortunately, the fertilizer 
don't stop uh, helping us grow crops. Permeate because we are a system, and then we find uh, polluted uh, oceans. So, in education, uh, we need to have uh, an education that is based on reality, not of wishful thinking, and uh, that is based uh, on uh, offering people the means, the ways, on which uh, they can uh, learn uh, to develop their potentiality. And uh, John Dewey, the famous uh, philosopher and uh, pedagogist, uh, said it already a long time ago, in my opinion, that unfortunately, in the educational system, uh, we have uh, a lot, might be never enough, uh, of teachers, but very, very few facilitators of learning. That's what we need, uh, facilitator of learning. Facilitator learning that uh, would help people to learn and to develop an inner compass, an awareness, a consciousness, and also we need to be aware that any decision we make, with any choice we make as scientists, there is always value. We are grounded on value. So we are grounded on relational politics, relational politics with ourselves, others, and the world, the image of the world that we create. I believe that we have ample scientific uh, evidence uh, that uh, we need uh, and uh, with uh, some variably will help effectively us uh, for a more human uh, and sustainable future and is uh, more awareness more empathy with all the other fellow human beings and living things, and enhance ability to respond. Responsibility usually is understood in a limited moralistic way. You are responsible, meaning you're guilty. Well, maybe there is that too, but that important aspect is to help people to be able to respond effectively to what are their circumstances. So, since uh, education is a very important uh, aspect uh, of the social construction of reality, we don't live in reality, we live in the construction of reality, and then uh, we live in the construction of our experience. So, education being uh, one of the most important building blocks uh, of uh, society, uh, effective education uh, uh, produces, uh, if it's effective, uh, creativity, resilience, uh, personal and social health, uh, and uh, also prosperity. You know, we still uh, measure with the general national gross product. <laughs> That doesn't measure prosperity at all. So you see education really can create problems. Dysfunctional education is a sort of damage in, you know, variable. And we can see that with the results that we have trained all our pupils that then become opinion makers, decision makers, they become minister, presidents, uh, they become uh, head uh, of a corporation, and uh, we learn, uh, have uh, construed them uh, as blind. Blind to the consequence of their limited knowledge uh, informing their action. And so, one of the tools that can help us, certainly one of the many, uh, is uh, what is uh, person or student centered education. We have uh, about 70 million uh, uh, people being researched uh, going through this kind uh, of student person centered education, uh, and uh, we see that some variables are very interesting. 
applies the, this kind of education that is a progressive uh, education, uh, more scientific grounded knowledge than traditional education and uh, is uh, congruent uh, with the also latest research finding of psychology, sociology, anthropology, and the neuroscience. Also, the research shows clearly that it's more effective in helping people learn uh, and be present in school, having a constructive behavior in schools, having a constructive behavior in the community where they live. And it's also more effective than traditional education when used with the dry <laughs> sort of a subject matter topic like chemistry, biology, computer science. And it's also, uh, well, uh, very effective in a long distance education and a hybrid education. Carl Rogers is the person that uh, about 75 years ago started with his group at the University of Chicago to research uh, all of this and formulate uh, this hypothesis. Uh, and uh, he individuated three main aspects, three main aspects that, that he called necessary and sufficient to promote a change. And these are experiencing respect, deep respect. For whom? First of all, for ourselves. If I have respect for myself, I can respect you. If I don't have respect of myself, it's very difficult to give somebody else what I do not possess. Then listening, but not listening and just hearing the words. Listening and understanding the other person's experience through the communication, not only verbal. And then uh, the capacity of deep contact, uh, deep contact uh, that we call congruence. Uh, congruence uh, means uh, basically that I experience, I symbolize correctly without distorting or negating. If I am uh, angry or, or hungry, I feel I'm hungry. I don't uh, project on somebody else uh, that he's angry with me. Uh, and so is the capacity for deep contact uh, with another human being if he uh, has a different skin than mine, different sexual orientation than mine, different religion than mine, but it's also the feeling, the capacity of feeling that is a natural aspect uh, of human being to feel towards uh, an animal or a plant uh, that is a living thing, a living organism, and uh, resonating with life in myself. Uh, the person-centered education goals uh, are to promote the innate, so it's not creating, uh, but it's uh, fostering what uh, we already are in the evolution uh, of uh, millions of years of life on this planet. So our capacity for creativity and from learning from our experience. Uh, if we are not uh, brainwashed by previous uh, uh, paradigms and concepts. And so uh, it promotes the development of all the capacity of human beings uh, and the integration of the individual focusing not only in the student personal growth, but also in the growth of everybody in the learning community. We see a school as a learning community. And there is no point to better education if you concentrate only on students. It would be mechanicistic. You have to consider the person, the director, the administration, the staff, the professor, and uh, Gary the other day was mentioning that uh, we're facilitating the change uh, into person, student centered um, of a small college uh, in coaching India. And it's uh, really exciting to hear professors that come there and say, I'm a different person. 
I speak more with my wife. I dedicate three hours a week to volunteer work. I listen more to my students. Of course, also the students are enthusiastic, but part of the faculty or staff says, I was very suspicious of this person-centered staff. In the beginning, I thought it was baloney. And they say, but I learn from my experience to trust myself. So it's not that we teach people something. We allow the natural quality of humanity to grow. And so they grow also as professional. And being part of this process is not teaching them, but is helping them to develop what they have always had and now they have a space where freely experiment and develop the, what their inner capacity. So to promote the development of creative and competent member of society, we want to foster their innate capacity to contribute to their community, not inventing anything, helping them to use what they already have. It's a totally different uh, pedagogy. Um, and so, very quickly, uh, the role of the teacher is very different from the traditional teacher. The role of the teacher is a, a commitment to be facilitate learning and uh, to democratic value. To share her or his passion uh, about learning. Because uh, one of the most uh, motivating things uh, for a student, uh, I remember, I was uh, in some uh, uh, topics, uh, one of the best in my class. Why? Because the professor was uh, sharing uh, his passion uh, for learning. I was very bad uh, in uh, other topics, uh, and different topic in every year because the teacher was boring or was a very uh, authoritative and nasty, you know, Zuccotti, don't speak. Uh, <laughs> a kid needs to communicate with his peers. Um, and also a teacher able to relate with trust and respect uh, to his or her student. But we need uh, somebody mentally healthy so able to relate to herself, her students, a member of the community with the real contact that cannot be faked. And to have the skills of attitude to be a facilitator of learning. So also teachers training, you know, I think that we have, we can do better than we do in it usually today. Nowadays, uh, just as two months ago, in Italy, we have a, a right-wing uh, government. Uh, they eliminated teacher's training. It was not enough uh, the teacher's training we had, uh, so they eliminate that. Uh, great. Uh, so with a piece of paper, you know how to facilitate learning. And then uh, to be an effective mentor. Because, uh, you know, to really cherish uh, to see people grow, you know, is a satisfaction, uh, really, if you are in touch. But also, the student learning to take a responsibility, that's very important. And to be responsible to promote uh, your learning. I remember at the University of California so many, many years ago, you could... Uh, talk uh, to a tutor and convince uh, him or her why you wanted to go in uh, Washington, D.C. to learn uh, intercultural thinking. And uh, you, you have to be approved, uh, but I was able to follow my interest uh, around uh, all the U.S. Uh, university looking for that professor. And, but uh, we are in wanting students interested to learn uh, social and personal problem-solving skills. Uh, so really able and wanting to learn how to learn, uh, the discovery. And uh, most important, 
to learn from mistakes, which is not all imp important, is an aspect of wisdom. We're going to make always mistake, and if we hide them, if uh, we blame others for our mistake, we're never going to learn anything. I wish a politician uh, would uh, develop uh, this uh, skill. And uh, the students uh, to be willing to cooperate uh, with the social construction of their school, of their learning em environment. So, in, a, in other words, uh, to learn uh, to relate with themselves and others with respect, empathy, and congruence. Also, going to end, person-centered and student-centered education is an effective form of peace education. But to what I mean peace? I don't mean just a nice word about word peace. That's not enough. To be Promoting peace, I have to be able to promote a peaceful relationship with myself, with the different part of myself. We are often at war before than our neighbor with different parts of ourselves, with different needs. How can I be peaceful if uh, I'm not accepting a part of myself, uh, and when I see that part of myself uh, that I project on others, I hate that. And uh, really ending, uh, I think uh, that education is a bio, psycho, social, spiritual learning experience, uh, and uh, to more effectively protect and promote a human and environment capital, we have uh, to operate uh, at all these levels, all together. Thank you. Obrigado. That I learned. <laughs>